Okay guys, um, I'm going to be going through my um, UV mapping presentation with you today, so um, yeah, I'll try and keep this, try and keep it as short as possible. Um, so obviously first, what is UV mapping? Um, you can go ahead and pause if you want and try and answer these questions yourselves, um, but I'll just go through each one now. So um, UV mapping is the process of taking a 3D, Im a 3D model and flattening it flattening it into a 2D um, net of faces, a 2D set of faces. Um, so obviously when, when you were in primary school, you used to um, take uh, a sheet of paper and you had a, some sort of weird sort of grid on it. You'd cut it out and you'd be able to fold, it was like a cross actually. Um, you'd cut it out and you'd be able to fold it into a box. UV mapping is the exact opposite. You take a 3D model and um, flatten it into a 2D um, set of faces. Uh, so that's what it is. Imagine you've got um, a box of, uh, I don't know, maybe your headphones came in a rectangular box. If you sort of cut up, cut down the sides and flatten it into a completely flat surface, that is again like UV mapping. Um, so the next question is why would I need to UV map? Uh, and that is because um, you need to texture your models. So when you're texturing them, you'll be doing it. You can do it inside of Photoshop, but obviously Photoshop Photoshop works in 2D. And the, so the reason you flatten your 3D object into a 2D set of faces is that so you can paint all this texture detail on it. And that may be that you get a texture from um, the internet. Say you do, a, say you've made a wooden crate. You want to get some wood grain textures. Um, so yeah. And then the last one is, does everything need to be UV mapped? And the answer is yes, everything does need to be UV mapped. Even if you think, oh, but this is just going to be, say you make a Pokeball and you say, you think, oh, but I just want the top to be red and the bottom to be white. I can just put on just, just a colour on there. No. What will often happen when you're working in industry is people will often say, oh, um, so um, I'm going to send this model back to you. Can you do this to it? And if somebody says, can you put some scratch marks on it, for example, uh, then it needs to be UV mapped. So it's always better just to UV map everything and it's not too difficult, don't worry. So we've got um, a series of images in this slide. Um, you can see the top one, you start off with a box, much like the example I showed you earlier, start off with a box and you peel those sort of faces down into this cross sort of 2D representation of a 3D model. Um, and here you you've got a 3D sphere, and you want to put the you want to turn it into the Earth by putting a globe texture on there. And if you were to say cut down this center line by here, and then unroll it out, you would actually get something like this. This is what the, the kind of UV map a sphere has, where you can then um, get your texture, um, sort of s squeeze it and compress it so it fits this, and then once you put it on your model it'll actually look pretty good. Um, and then again we've got another example at the bottom, a 3D mesh of some sort of game character. Um, this is just the face um, flattened into a 2D sort of set of faces so that you can then take it into Photoshop and start painting on all this colour. And then once you reapply that you've got a much nicer sort of 3D model than this one. So yeah, um, UV mapping process, how it's done. Um, basically you can do it inside of Maya and that's what I'm going to be teaching you in these videos and through the next sessions you have with me. Um, uh, so yeah, you can do it inside of Maya. You can, the bottom po uh, the bottom bullet point, let's just skip ahead, it says um, you, you, you can use some, some third party software. There's one called Roadkill, um, quite a dark name, but obviously you know, animals, Roadkill is a flattened animal, so... <laughs> It's uh, quite a dark name, but um, you, d you can get third-party software which specialises in just UV mapping. But it's important that you know how to do it inside of Maya. Um, and then the middle uh, point is checkerboards. Now, when we're UV mapping, we apply checkerboards to our models so that we can see. Che obviously, you know checkerboards are made up of um, squares, and those each black and white square is uniform, which means it has the same width in height than it does in its actual um, width. So width and height are the same dimensions. And if you see any of those squares stretching, so say they're a lot taller than they are wide, you know that there's a problem. Because if you were then to put a texture on it of some sort of dust or scratches, 
those dust or scratches would be severely sort of stretched just like the checkerboard is which is why we use checkerboards so here you can see some bad examples of uv mapping in this first image we should be able to see a checkerboard but they're just stretched into lines um, in this image right by here it kind of looks okay this is this is what we want to see uniform squares but you know look by here it's all stretched all stretched down this bit it's all stretched around here and the same with this one so you've got your look it looks fine here yeah that's good that's awesome but uh, as soon as we come to here look it's being stretched all the way across so that's not good so bearing that in mind here is a good example of some UV mapping every square on the skull is exactly uniform they're quite small but you can see that they're the same size on each different part so you've got the teeth which have probably been UV mapped separately to the skull but you can see the squares are the exact same size throughout the whole model and the same with this sort of weird rock shape the squares are exactly uniform same in the width that they are in the height uh, so this is a good example of UV mapping this is our aim so to, in summary we use checkerboards to check for scratch for stretching if we were to get a bone texture or some sort of um maybe concrete texture and make it white so it looks like bone basically all those sort of you know the little speckles the little dots they would be severely stretched if we were using this uv map however here it's been done proper and good and so any texture you put on here isn't going to stretch or morph it's going to look pretty perfect okay so uh, i'm going to talk a little bit about the uv mapping process um if you have your model and you go to i think it's um a menu yeah i think it's just called uv yeah uv drop down um there's four that i'll talk about there's four different sort of t methods um first of all cylindrical mapping then planar mapping spherical mapping and automatic mapping now cylindrical mapping you can use this if you're modeling something like a, um, a post box a tin of beans maybe a bottle it, it, it makes it, it's obviously cylindrical mapping it's built for cylinders and when you're talking about planar mapping, I barely use this because all the models I model, they're, they're not just a plane, obviously, is one big face, uh, one flat surface. But most of the things we model aren't flat surfaces, so I tend to stay away from that. Um, spherical mapping as well, very, very rarely use it. Um, if, I'm do if I'm making a football, I'll use it, you know. But uh, otherwise, I, I very rarely use spherical mapping. Now the one I use a lot of is automatic and all this does is think of it as the, t the texture, the checkerboard texture you've got on there, think of it as it's being projected on by loads of projectors and all automatic mapping does is it, it figures out the best calculation of how to UV map and from there it's never finished, it's never finished, you always have to like, you know, stitch it together yourself, you know, because it'll be, it'll break your model up basically imagine you've got a finished imagine you've got a finished jigsaw it breaks it up into sets of faces and then you have to kind of stitch it back together so it'll take your model of say a house break it up into loads and loads of different sets of faces it'll do its best guess and then um, you just have to kind of stitch things back together it's like doing a jigsaw uv mapping very much like doing a jigsaw um so this is the, uh, uh, an image of the uv editor um again even though we're in maya remember that this is a 2d view and it's made up of four squares. So given that it's a 2D view, um, you ha obviously have, coming across here, your X axis, and going up is your Y axis. You don't have a Z axis, there's no third axis. Um, now, the reason this is called the UV editor is because these axis, the X going across and the Y, have actually been renamed to the U axis and the V axis, simply because when you're working in your 3D view, um, you know, when you're working in your 3D view, somebody and somebody comes across and says, "Oh, some, something's a bit weird in your x-axis." You may be thinking, "Oh, not in my UV editor. They mean in, you know, my 3D view because we call the 3D view x, y, and z. So it's just better that we differentiate and call this 2D view the U and the V axis. It's just a lot easier. Um, so that's where the term UV in comes from. UV editor." Um, so the tools that you'll be using, one of them is um, move and sew UV edges. So it's a little bit difficult to see in this because obviously it's green by here and it's red all along here. But I've highlighted an edge 
and uh, by here and it's turned red but you can also see if you zoom in um sorry if you zoom in there's a red edge along here it's a bit hard to see because it's against this red line so it's like red on red but if you I've highlighted this edge and it's also highlighted an edge down here and what that means is those two edges in the 3d model it's one same edge but where you've where it's been broken up by the automatic mapping process these edges are the same and they need to be sewn back together um, so yeah that's that's what move and sew UV edges does you um, select an edge and if it's got a ve if, if you select one edge in your UV edge and select another one down here, you know that they're the same edge and they need to be stitched together. Um, so that's the move and sew UV edges, which is by here. Um, next is layout. Now, we've got these, if we go back a sec, we've got these four, um, four squares. Whenever you export your 2D UV map into Photoshop ready for texturing, it only exports this top right hand square okay this is the only area that it exports so what layout does is it select it detects all the groups of faces all which are called shells by the way um, and it lays them out in this top right hand corner it scales them if it needs to um, but yeah that's what it does now finally once you've stitched all your you know once you've stitched all your UVs together so instead of having five groups of faces you've actually got one group of large one large group of faces all sort of sewn together um so what unfold does sometimes it'll be a bit messy and you know things will be a little bit too rotated all unfold does is it thinks okay so the user has stitched these faces together now i'm just going to do my best calculation to lay it out flat and neatly and that's what unfold does so say we move the say we move and sew these together but you know maybe it's sort of coming off at an angle um what move and sew will do it'll try and sort it out to its best um but quite often it doesn't do a good job and you may have to move each individual uv point individually <laughs> um so yeah uh i'm going to go be going through this in software as well but just um so you know to apply a checkerboard you can right click your model go to material attributes um when you're holding your right click down and then in your material attributes select the box next to color uh the, each attribute in the material has got um a sort of checkerboard next to it click that box but that doesn't give it a checkerboard instantly it'll then give a give you a menu where it'll say file um mountain you know different types of textures and one of them's checker click checker and then it'll be fine um so when it comes to exporting our uvs if we look back here we've got something called uv snapshot and here it is uv snapshot so when you're exporting them if you click uv snapshot once you're done it'll give you this layout where it's asking you what dim dimensions you want to export the image as what image format now all i'll say is it's got to be uniform it can't be 2000 pixels by 1000 pixels what i would say is stick with 2048 by 2048 that's a, that's a good balance you know 2k so yeah 2048 by 2048 uh, if you're doing if you're modeling for games you may want to go down to 1024 by 1024 um png is a fine format you can that's, that's absolutely fine png if you're doing something for a, a game model you may want to cut it down to 1024 pixels by 1024 but if you're doing it for film or tv 2048 by 2048 is fine um so um that concludes the tutorial for today um the you know little theory talk through i'll upload another video which will um show you how to actually uv inside of maya but i just wanted to cover this theory bit so thanks for tuning in cheers